Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final stretch of our conference, the Conference Codex. I would, uh, my name is Diana Pena Gonzalez. I'm from the Institute for Health Care Advancement, and I have with us Michael Valera, President and CEO, and Rima Rudd, our strategic partner and conference advisor. So I will turn it over to you, Michael. Thanks, Diana. Uh, so I just wanted to say, first of all, a few thanks to everybody. Uh, number one, to all of you for joining us for the conference. I really appreciate it. Uh, please make sure you fill out those evaluations. We really want to know um, how we did on the conference. Of our conference, the conference and, uh, my name is Oh, we're having, okay. Um, the, um, I did want to thank a few people. Uh, first of all, as I said, all of you for attending. We really appreciate you being here. Um, I wanted to thank our staff. Uh, this is a really a team effort led by Diana uh, in developing the conference and the, and the um, uh, content. And Rima, thank you so much for your, um, your input and your uh, guidance and your counsel in helping us put the uh, conference content together. Uh, I'd like to thank our ASL interpreters. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, that's Lena and uh, Amy and our tech support for the conference. Thank you, uh, Jansen and everybody else. And uh, just one more note, as you know, we did not charge um, tuition for this conference this year. Uh, for those of you who made a, a, a voluntary uh, a, a donation to those charitable organizations, thank you for that. If you did not, or if you want to throw a few extra bucks towards some of these organizations, these are great organizations that are really working to change the world. So if you can make a, a generous donation, just kind of dig deep and throw a few bucks at these guys, we would really appreciate it. Um, this is our conference coda. And so this is our opportunity to revisit and kind of recap for the conference and also to allow you to ask some questions. And so, uh, you know, when I started the conference uh, on Tuesday, you know, I mentioned that, you know, our whole landscape has really changed. And I think you heard that in the conference and the speakers that life is never going to be the same. And for those of us who, are using the phrase, I can't wait to return to normal. I would ask you to rethink using that phrase because that kind of means that this whole 14 months that we've been through uh, was really in vain, that nothing has changed. And this couldn't be further from the truth. So in order for us to really adequately and, 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 and completely serve the population that we serve, we need to make sure that we understand what this new world looks like. We need to look inward and do some reflection and self-examination and understand who we are, how we've changed. And especially we need to walk a mile in the proverbial shoes of those who we serve and make sure that we understand what these new circumstances means for them and how we can adequately serve them. So I hope we learned some lessons from this conference. Our goal on this conference is always to provide some operational solutions to improve health literacy. I think there were some great uh, case studies, some great examples of what people are doing uh, there were some skill building sessions. I hope you learned some skills. And, um, uh, you know, again, I just always appreciate the opportunity for us to come together as a community to share, to have conversations, and to continue to move forward. And we will continue those conversations on the Health Literacy Solutions Center and on the discussion list. Now I'd like to turn it over to uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Rima Rudd. Rima? Uh, thank you. Um, it, it's interesting because I saw and felt and heard a real mixture of the personal and the professional uh, throughout this time. And there's a similarity, obviously, it's the same us that's involved in that. There's a, essentially a nervousness of people saying, I'm not yet ready for prime time to come back you know, to the reality of, of all that I can possibly do. Um, but that, ner that nervousness can also turn to exuberance. And we saw some of that here um, in the examples that people gave of the work that they were doing and what they were able to accomplish, what we all were able to accomplish um, in spite of what we were experiencing and in face of what we were experiencing. And so, although I myself am not quite ready for prime time yet, quite frankly, um, I, I like to anticipate that exuberance of coming together again with colleagues, sharing ideas um, in a very concrete way and taking concrete steps. There is something, however, that makes me a little nervous. I've learned a great deal during this time. I've, I've always known about inequalities 
but I never came quite up front, close at hand to witnessing the inequalities and what the inequalities have led to. Um, I've learned a lot from Black Lives Matter in a very profound way. My dilemma and the dilemma that I put in front of all of us is how do we move forward with exuberance, with the happiness and seeing friends and family and coworkers and not forget, how do we hold on to the lessons learned um, and carry that with us into everything that we do? So when Michael said, of course, you know, we're going back to a new normal, meaning we're creating a new normal, we're moving ahead and the dilemma will be with me, and I hope it stays with you in a way that we can solve, is how do we take the next step and the next step and the next step and not forget the lessons learned. So that first and foremost, in all of our actions, we have these disparities in front of us. We have the lessons learned of seeing what inequities lead to, of seeing what race, racial discrimination and bias leads to. Um, and we need to keep that in, in front of ourselves um, as we move forward. And I think that's what has been on my mind. That's the dilemma that I'm trying to work out. It's almost, I, I think about the old cartoon of trying to get the donkey to move and there's a stick hanging out and there's a carrot hanging from that stick in front of the docking. So it'll keep taking steps with the illusion that it's moving forward. I need to keep that carrot in front of me to keep myself honest. And I hope that you succeed in doing that as well. I'm gonna pause and perhaps come back after Diana has something to say, but I think that's what has been most in my mind, how not to forget. Yes, thank you. No, please, if any other concluding remarks you have, please let us know. Um, but I, I, would, I would like to add to that. There's something that came up for me in one of the sessions and her in the, in the panel that was a couple of sessions ago, she had said that something she was keeping in mind was, um, was important for her was clarity and growth. And I think that that's something important for all of us, and not clarity, um, to, keep it, to keep in mind um, curiosity and growth is what she had said. And I think that if we all carry that mindset, it would, it would be um, great for the community at large and also to synergize. Um, and a place that we could do this synergy together is the Health Literacy Solution Center. And that's where we, we kind of put that out there as a place where people can share resources. Um, you can continue to learn in the webinars on there if you want to be a webinar speaker and share about things that you have done. And that's a perfect place for us to continue to, to learn and grow together um, and continue these interprofessional collaborations and intergenerational collaborations, most importantly. So we just have a couple of uh, minutes left here, but I just wanted to remind Michael, any last words? Also, if you guys have any questions, please throw them into the questions there. I, I will get to those. Um, but yeah, any got Rima, Michael, any other things you want to add? Um, I was just going to say again, uh, I, I would like to make sure that everybody um, please take advantage of our uh, health literacy discussion list and our solution center for continuing the conversation. Um, if there are things that you learned uh, that you would like to uh, uh, discuss more, that you would like some additional coverage or maybe a webinar on um, or some resources for, please let us know that um, and let's make sure that we, uh, that we share some of that. And again, there's a ton, a ton, ton, ton of pre-recorded content from this conference. If you didn't get a chance to look at some of that, um, please uh, look at the pre-recorded sessions list. A lot of really great sessions there and you can earn um, uh, some continuing education hours for those. So please take advantage of all the, the things that we have. Rima, some final, are there anything else you wanted to add? Well, I should end on a more positive note, I think, than I did. And so I do want to say that I take great joy in the recognition that health literacy is making a tremendous contribution to notions of equality and equity. Um, the idea that we focus on making information, making services, making care accessible. Um, and it's that accessibility and the dignified, respectful conversations that come from following uh, the rules and regulations 
foundations of health literacy communication uh, that can really lead us um, together again um, in a very positive way. So there is joy to be found um, in this work. All right. Um, I think I just saw one question and a lot of comments a lot of people are thanking. Um, are, are thanking us for the conference and they're saying it's very informative. Um, one question was how long are the recordings going to be up? The recordings will be up for ever. <laughs> the, they'll be on this conference website for, for a year so you can continue getting continuing education. Um, and then after that, we'll take it down from this website and put it on the Solution Center. So you can continue um, accessing those sessions and the uh, material that we've presented today. Um, I think that is, those are all the, any other questions that you guys may have? I think that's it. Um, digital tote bag, I just got a message at, commit the digital tote bag for um, any handouts that we might have on there for, um, uh, for participants about other charitable events, about other initiatives that are going on and from also from our sponsors, they've added some handouts in there as well. See any other questions? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the conference. Thank you, Rima, for always being so inspiring. Um, I learn new things every year. Thank you. Uh, many thanks to each of you. So a lot of thank yous. That's what's coming in. That's it. So no, but thank you guys for participating in the conference. And really this conference wouldn't be much without all of the participation from everybody from really from around the world. And um, the conference, we always look forward to getting responses from you about speakers and your input about how to improve next year. So we would love to hear those things as well as topics that you think that we should be covering next year. Um, and we'd also like to always encourage if you're interested in at presenting at next year's conference, we always put out those call for speakers at the end of the year. So please do be on the lookout for those. And um, that's all I have to say. Michael, I know Rima, you guys always have great things to end it on. We're very open to hearing about thematic um, ideas that crop up. What are the themes that are cropping up as you come and return back to work? And we'd really love to hear that and see how we can weave that in to the conference planning. And we'd also like to always encourage if you're interested in presenting a next conference. All right. Thank you all so much. Um, have a great Memorial weekend. And uh, we'll hopefully see you next year. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.